Sorry, I wanted them to see you, see you too, too, very much. Michael York, the star of Logan's Run. York plays one of the Sandmen, the futuristic police of this story set in the 23rd century. And it involved a camera kind of revolving around the subject, in which case that was me, my head. Uh, and it's still so very much in the primitive stage that it meant kind of talking much slower than usual. Uh, uh, the idea, the effect, is that you have these kind of heads that will hover in space, completely three-dimensional. The camera will be able to track around them. They'll be solid, and yet, um, you know, one can go through them. I don't quite understand it myself, and I'm not explaining it any better, but it looks tremendous. Did you have to have seven or six different facets of one's personality? That's it, yeah. The scene, in fact, is an interrogation scene in the future where the subject is placed in this kind of chair. Uh, it's the alternative of giving a truth drug. In this case, things are put on his head, and they extract the kind of the true essence, and these heads speak it, um, which should look terrific. Michael Anderson, the director of Logan's Run, also did Around the World in 80 Days. Now he tells of the problems he faces in setting the look and feel of the 23rd century for his new movie. Michael, what uh, scenes will be taking place here at the Water Gardens? Well, the, the, the old man, played by Peter Ustinov, is being led back to the domed city by Logan and Jessica, played by Michael York and Jenny Agata, and they come to this great hydrogalvanic system that feeds the waters of the ocean into the for the power of this city and they leave him outside and they bid him a farewell and dive into the raging boiling waters and come up inside the city in order to destroy it it's uh, a, it's it's a, a, a wonderful location for it because they're surrounded by by surging waters and uh, uh, it's a very exciting location yes as a, as a director of a film that's going into the 23rd century, what are some of the things that you have to be vitally concerned with? Uh, costumes, um, uh, not only what they wear, but how they behave. The, it, but it's based on the kind of society they are. It's a pleasure-loving society. They have no animals, for instance, uh, so you can't you can't see them eating meat. Uh, they they there is no pollution. Uh, it's a life dedicated to total pleasure. Uh, there are no, there is no family life. So when I, when I, when I group people, I must not make sure there is no child together with a mother and father because families don't exist. Uh, are there paintings on the wall? What kind of music do they listen to? Are there ashtrays? No, they don't smoke. Um, a million and one questions that come up every single day and for which there is no normal answer. We have created the society completely from scratch out of all of our imaginations. 
One of the things that we've been hearing about, Michael, is the fact that this is the first time that holograms will have been used in a feature film. And it's a very complicated technical process, but uh, as I understand it, it's as if you're seeing 3D without the glasses. Is that right? It is 3D without the glasses. Of course, we are photographing it in two dimensions, so you will not necessarily get the full 3D effect. But what I can do with the camera using holograms has never been done on a film before. I can move right through, an optic, right through with the camera, through an optical effect, round it. Uh, I can sh see people's faces through it. People can put their hands through it. It is a remarkable effect. Uh, it will add great stature to the film in the sequences we use it in, and it certainly hasn't been used before. Yes. How do, was it your idea to use this? I first thought of holograms and brought it up, and, but at the time we, we uh, we, we thought of it, we couldn't find any that had been made. We found some static ones, and then we discovered in San Francisco that uh, somebody had made a breakthrough and had made a moving hologram uh, using laser beam uh, light to record it and an ordinary light bulb to reproduce it. And it was a major breakthrough in, in, in holograms, and that's what we're using. Yes. Did you have to experiment quite a little before you could get the effect you wanted? We've experimented, we've handed it over to our own special effects people, and they have now uh, worked on and perfected a system uh, that is truly remarkable. What does this mean as far as the future of the film industry is concerned? I think that there will be hologram films within 10 years. Uh, you'll be able to see nine-inch miniature people running around your dining room table speaking and talking, and uh, it's a whole different form of entertainment. I say 10 years, who knows? It may be five, it may be 15, but it works. In other words, you don't have to have a screen or something visible to, on which to project the image? No, it's projected into space, but it's comes, it comes from a series of, uh, uh, of images burnt into celluloid by laser beams and refracted light uh, refracts those images onto a surface of your choice. That's the theory of it. Uh, you must talk to my holographer. <laughs> <laughs>